Hey, whatever happened to your blonde friend? That girl you used to really like. I must have looked at him like a confounded idiot. Don Juan laughed with great delight. I did not know what to say. You told me about her. I never mentioned anything like that to you. Of course you have. I wanted to protest, but he stopped me, saying that it did not matter how he knew about her, that the important issue was that I liked her. I sensed the surge of animosity towards him building up within myself. Don't stall. This is the time when you should cut off your feelings of importance. You once had a woman, a very dear woman, and then one day you lost her. I told him he was right. There had been a very important blonde girl in my life. Why isn't she with you? She left. Why? There are many reasons. There were not so many reasons. There was only one. You made yourself too available. Was it wrong? It was deadly wrong. I have seen it all. She was a fine person. I knew that it was meaningless to argue, but I was angry with him for touching on that sore spot in my life, and I said the girl in question was not such a fine person after all, that in my opinion, she was rather weak. So are you. But that's not important. What counts is that you have looked for her everywhere. That makes her a special person in your world. And for a special person, one should only have fine words. I felt embarrassed. A great sadness had begun to engulf me. What are you doing to me, Don Juan? I asked. You always succeed in making me sad. Why? You are now indulging. What is the point of all this, Don Juan? Being inaccessible is the point. I brought up that memory of this person only as a means to show you directly what I couldn't show you with the wind. You lost her because you were accessible. You were always within her reach, and your life was a routine one. No, I said. You're wrong. My life was never a routine. It was, and it is, a routine. It's an unusual routine, and that gives you the impression it's not a routine, but I assure you it is. The art of the hunter is to become inaccessible. In the case of that blonde girl, it would have meant you would have become a hunter and met her sparingly, not the way you did. You stayed with her day after day until the only feeling that remained was boredom. To be inaccessible means you touch the world around you sparingly. You don't use and squeeze people until they have shriveled to nothing, especially the people you love. I've never used anyone, I said sincerely. But Don Juan maintained I had, and thus, he could bluntly state that I had become tired and bored with people. To be unavailable means that you deliberately avoid exhausting yourself and others. A hunter knows he will lure the game into his traps over and over, so he doesn't worry. To worry is to become accessible, unwittingly accessible. And once you worry, you cling to anything in a desperation. And once you cling, you're bound to get exhausted or to exhaust whoever or whatever you're clinging to. I told them that in my day-to-day -day life, it was inconceivable to be inaccessible. My point was that I had to be within reach of everyone that had something to do with me. I've told you already that to be inaccessible does not mean to hide or be secretive. It doesn't mean you cannot deal with people either. A hunter uses his world sparingly and with tenderness, regardless of whether the world might be things or plants or animals or people or power. A hunter deals intimately with the world, and yet he is inaccessible to that same world. That's a contradiction, I said. He cannot be inaccessible if he's there in the world hour after hour, day after day. You did not understand. He is inaccessible because he's not squeezing his world out of shape. He taps it lightly, stays for as long as he needs to, then swiftly moves away, hardly leaving a mark. <laughs>